सही घर है मैं तो कह रहा हूँ डन कर लेते हैं बढ़िया घर है यार पानी घर है पानी 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 हेलो बेटा तुम लोग यहाँ शिफ्ट हो रहे हो मोस्टली आंटी सही है मेरे हस्बैंड है ना तो इनके कुछ दवाइयाँ चाहिए वो आप ले आओ प्रेस्क्रिप्शन कितनी अच्छी बात है तुम जैसे यंगस्टर्स इस बिल्डिंग में आ रहे हैं पैसे तो लो अच्छा मैं क्या कह रही थी जब आप मार्केट जा ही रहे हो तो मुरारी की दुकान से एक डबल रोटी और थोड़े अमरूद ले आना बहुत अमरूद खाते हैं अच्छा, अच्छा सुनो बच्चे जा रहे हैं तुम्हें कुछ चाहिए यही लेके आना बेटा आंटी जी एक मिनट हाउसिंग डॉट कॉम हाउसिंग डॉट कॉम विध मैक्सिमम ओनर प्रॉपर्टीज हाउसिंग डॉट कॉम पर से परफेक्ट डाउनलोड ना आते हैं आंटी लेके सामान आपका दूध ले आते हैं चलो फुटले हेलो एवरीवन नमस्कार सलाम सत्र अकाल वन अकम वी आर बैक विद अ फ्रेश एपिसोड ऑफ कीपिंग इट रियल बाय हाउसिंग डॉट कॉम दिस इज इंडिया फर्स्ट रियल एस्टेट फोकस्ड पॉडकास्ट इट ब्रिंग्स टू यू updates and views and insights about the reality sector an explainer on a chosen subject and a deep dive into an industry trend or topic you can catch the episode on housing.com on the housing.com app on your shot.in spotify.com apple podcasts google podcasts gana.com and jio seven if you miss the episode don't worry we have you covered wear your headphones or put on the speaker You can listen to this while driving, eating, cooking, jogging, running, walking, chopping vegetables or basically doing anything else wherever you want, wherever you are. Lyricist and writer Varun Garg shares his Mera Pehla Ghar experience with us. RBI hikes interest rates again. What are the amenities that home buyers look for while deciding on a property? NCR still dominates in the number of real estate units despite the rise of non NCR districts as real estate market. How should married couples select properties? Details of all of these and much more are in this episode. Your first house is always special. The feeling, the experience, the excitement, the emotions, everything is so overwhelming and distinctive. This is true for everyone. In this episode, we spoke to lyricist and writer Varun Garg, who shares his "Mera Pehla Ghar" experience with us. Hello, I am Varun, and uh, I work as a writer for media and entertainment uh, industry. बहुत सारे TV shows, reality shows, और गाने हम लोग लिखते हैं. और मेरा पहला घर. जब इस बारे में मैं सोचता हूँ, तो मुझे बहुत, बहुत, बहुत ज़्यादा एक्साइटमेंट भी होती है और थोड़ा इमोशनल भी हो जाता हूँ क्योंकि आई वाज़ द काइंड ऑफ अ गाय जिसे ये लगता था कि घर की ज़रूरत नहीं है बिकॉज़ यू कुड ऑलवेज रेंट आउट अ प्लेस एंड इट्स फाइनेंशियली अ बेटर डिसीजन लेकिन जब मैंने ऐसा डिसाइड किया कि मुझे अपना पहला घर लेना है तो वो डील करने के बाद जब पहली बार मैं घर देख करके उसे सेलेक्ट करके उसका एक डील फाइनल किया उसी वक्त से मेरा एक इमोशनल बॉन्डिंग उस घर के साथ हो गई और एट दैट पॉइंट आई न्यू दैट माय पेरेंट्स माय वाइफ माय किड्स वी कुड ऑल बी एट अ प्लेस टुगेदर विच वी कुड कॉल होम अदरवाइज पेरेंट्स होम टाउन में थे आई यूज टू बी इन बॉम्बे और आई यूज टू बी ट्रैवलिंग टू सम अदर लोकेशन फॉर शूट्स लेकिन कोई एक जगह में ऐसी आइडेंटिफाई नहीं कर पाता था ऑल ऑफ द वर्ल्ड जिसे मैं कह सकूं कि हाँ ये मेरा घर है सो टू बी एबल टू से दैट वन लाइन विद द कम्प्लीट सेंस ऑफ फ्रीडम एंड रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी एंड इमोशन एंड टू गेट दैट वन सेंस ऑफ बिलोंगिंगनेस आई बिलीव मेरा पहला घर इज टोटली वर्थ इट द रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया Monetary Policy Committee on December 7 hiked the repo rate by 35 basis points to 6.25% in its last meeting of 2022 continuing its fight against inflation Repo is the rate at which the central bank lends short term funds to banks one basis point is 100th of a percentage point 
मिस्टर ध्रुव अग्रवाल ग्रुप सीईओ हाउसिंग डॉट कॉम क्रॉप टाइगर डॉट कॉम एंड मकान डॉट कॉम सेट दैट द इंक्रीज इन द की इंटरेस्ट रेट इज लोअर दैन द लास्ट थ्री हाइक्स विच शोज दैट आर बी आई इज मॉडरेटिंग इट्स व्यूज ऑन इन्फ्लेशन ग्रेजुअली नेवर द लेस द कॉस्ट ऑफ बोरोइंग फॉर बोथ इंडिविजुअल्स एंड कॉर्पोरेट्स विल गो अप विच विल इम्पैक्ट इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी मिस्टर अग्रवाल सेट ऑन द रियल एस्टेट साइड interest rates on home loans have increased to around 8.5% from 6.5% before may this year but thankfully there has not been any impact on housing demand and sales rather demand continues to improve across all the price categories in the residential segment he said mr agarwal said that there should not be any concern on the demand front while mortgage rates remain under 10% The MPC has been on a rate hike course throughout the year, increasing policy rates by nearly 2 percentage points to fight inflation. Retail inflation has remained above the central bank's comfort level for nearly the entire year. What are the amenities that home buyers look for while deciding on a property? Latest trends from housing.com's Consumer sentiment survey shows that the proximity to healthcare and open areas have taken over other amenities while searching for a home. According to the survey, proximity to healthcare is the top most priority while shortlisting a property, followed by access to open and recreational spaces, daycare centers, closeness to offices and food and entertainment centers are other amenities respectively that home buyers look for. while deciding on buying a house the need for safety and security during the pandemic has brought focus on healthcare as a must needed amenity in the recent year the hybrid working policies means people are staying at home for longer periods of time which explains the focus on open spaces also buyers predominantly working end users are looking for daycare centers in their vicinity preferably in the community The preference of home being closer to the office is slowly waning as hybrid working requires one to visit the office only for a few days. Hence the prerequisite of property being closer to office is no more a priority amongst home buyers. Another amenity that has made it to the home buyers list is food and entertainment centers such as restaurants, malls, high streets etc. We spoke to Ankita Sood head of research at proptiger.com housing.com and makan.com to break down the trends for us let's listen in welcome ankita welcome to housing it's lovely to have you here thank you thank you sanskriti it's always great to have this chat with you so i want to begin by asking that you know covid-19 pandemic has brought about many changes in our life and you know one of the most uh, important changes it has made is our relationship with our homes how this has changed the way people have started making decisions so far as searching for new homes and home buying is concerned right uh, so you know i'd say the covid-19 pandemic uh, it's rightly been termed as the black swan event in the history you know that absolutely threw life and businesses out of sorts the pandemic uh, brought about this emotional structural and life changes in the way we live in the way we work due to social distancing and restrictions of movement working from home reverse migration etc all this you know sanskriti altered the way people perceived residential real estate mm. it is a safe haven now you know than just a, a real estate asset post pandemic we seeing this renewed importance of home ownership that came to the forefront with safety and security becoming paramount in you know deciding while anybody is narrowing down their search for a home along with this factors such as location nearness to social and physical infrastructure and an emphasis on quality of life are the main deciding factors which are specially driving demand across our top 8 metros Uh, so also amongst all the other things that have come out of the pandemic like you said safety and security health and you know owning a home became the most important factors of people's life as it is indicated from your consumer sentiment survey help us please understand the changes in consumer behavior trends regarding home buying now 
as I highlighted earlier, the pandemic brought the focus back on health, on well-being, on quality of life and habitability. These are given more weightages now, unlike before, you know, where people were in an ongoing hustle. Having said that, the current buyer, you know, is predominantly an end user who is investing his hard-earned money to get a safe haven and quality home for his or her family. This shift in perception, attitude is very evident, uh, you know, when we are seeing our site visits as well. We conducted a consumer survey to actually understand this nuance and this trend across the top eight cities. And the results were very much showcasing this change in behavior, where the nearness to healthcare infrastructure and open spaces was cited as the top ranked consideration for our potential home buyers, you know, when they are shortlisting a project. And I think before the COVID era and before the beginning of the pandemic, a home buyer would look for a property which was closer to their workplace or near transit spots. But now that seems to be also changing. Why is that? See, uh, like I said, we were in a hustle before, right? Everybody was, they wanted to stay closer to office. You had uh, fixed work hours. Uh, there was, you know, no concept of uh, work from home. Work from home, like I'd say, was looked down upon. There was no other way than what we already knew, right? Hence, uh, to complete this hustle and cut on transit times, we never thought of living far away from work, no matter whatever premium we have to pay. The pandemic changed all that perception that work can go on even while working from home. Though I would want to add that it is only applicable to some sectors, definitely, not all of it. Now, it is due to this flexibility of work from home or the hybrid work model that one of the major residential shifts started taking place in our cities. People started moving outwards. People now do not mind staying away from the core business or the CBD areas as this gives them more flexibility in terms of space, value for money, the you know money spent on renting or buying away from the city center. Our consumer survey that we conducted across the top eight cities also suggests that, you know, the home buyers, they are okay to, you know, move 10 to 20 kilometers away from their core working areas. But it is also interesting to note that while they're okay to stay away from their work areas because of hybrid work culture, they would want, uh, you know, nearness to social uh, areas or social uh, infrastructure, they want it within a radius of 1.5 to 2 kilometers. So decentralization, decentralization of the urban areas is more of a trend that we have seen post the pandemic. Really true. I think work from home has changed a lot of lives and um, yeah, it's all happened post the pandemic. And lastly, I want to come to that, you know, earlier spaces such as balconies, open spaces, flower beds, gardens were not like so important for people. It wasn't a priority while you were shortlisting a house or a home. What does your survey show about these changes in the parameters of how people shortlist or look at properties now? Absolutely. Now, beauty, aesthetics, these are all very softer elements, right? First, uh, property searches happened on affordability, uh, location definitely was important. But, you know, more or less on affordability, you didn't mind. Uh, these things were not aesthetics. Uh, openness was not that important. We were all confined to our homes now, you know, during our pandemic. And it reinforced that element of uh, that you wanted openness. You wanted pleasantness around you. Now, be it through home decor, bringing more greenery in your own home or staying closer to open or recreational areas. This shift has definitely happened, you know, in our cities. And these are very softer elements which uh, data cannot capture. But, uh, you know, our consumer survey highlights that having open areas and recreational spaces in the vicinity of the property 
was ranked only second to healthcare infrastructure nearness. People are now more particular on the aesthetics and green area of the project and the openness in and around it. So yes, these finer elements which propel the quality of life, the habitability of the area have become of paramount importance, especially post the pandemic. Yeah, truly. And it's always lovely to talk to you, Ankita. We here at Housing learn a lot from you. Thank you so much for giving us your time and speaking to us. Always a pleasure. Despite the high number of residential projects in non-NCR districts of Uttar Pradesh, three NCR districts, Ghaziabad, Gautam Nagar, and Meerut have the highest concentration of units, according to the Uttar Pradesh Real Estate Regulatory Authority, RERA. In a statement, Uttar Pradesh RERA said, in September, 36 projects have been registered with UP RERA, the highest ever. Out of the total, 8,116 units in these projects, 3,841 units or about 47% are to be constructed in 12 projects of these three NCR districts, Ghaziabad, Gautam Nagar, and Meerut. While 4,275 units will be built in 24 projects in 11 non-NCR districts, which is approximately 53% of the total units, the UP RERA said. Hence, it is clear that despite the registration ratio of new projects being 35 to 65 in NCR and non-NCR, the ratio of units is 47 to 53, which shows the dominance of NCR-based projects, it noted. Factors like floor area ratio, better employment, as well as business opportunities and the preference of home buyers to settle in NCR have resulted in higher demand for housing units in NCR region. To meet this demand, reality players are investing in projects spread over 10 to 20 acres and even more, apart from robust infrastructure growth across categories. The Uttar Pradesh RERA received 125 applications to register new projects in the first half of 2022. According to the rules, a developer is required to register any new project with the authority and obtain a registration number before beginning construction work. RERA registers a project only if the developer gets the project map sanctioned by the local authorities. A number of these new reality projects are coming up in cities outside the national capital region. Earlier, 70% of new projects were from Noida, Greater Noida, Ghaziabad and Meerut and the remaining 30% were from non-NCR cities like Lucknow, Kanpur and Agra, RERA informed. In September, 70% of new applications were from non-NCR towns and 30% from NCR towns. Rajiv Kumar, chairman of UP RERA said, Out of 36 applications received in September this year, 24 were from non-NCR towns such as Lucknow, Agra and Muradabad. And the remaining were from NCR towns including Noida, Meerut and Ghaziabad. The total cost of these residential and commercial projects is Rs 3,648.35 crore and RERA has sanctioned 6,931 residential and 1,185 commercial units. Are you a married couple who wants to have a new home of their own but not able to decide upon which home to buy? No worries we may have a few answers. Even though people are buying their first homes in their early 20s, house ownership becomes important after matrimony. For a more stable setup, who would like to move places every 11 months, right? Having your own home becomes crucial, not to mention the parental pressure for the accumulation of joint savings and investment in a stable asset. Considering that joint property purchases are easier than solo ownership, married couples often plan their purchases driven by emotional gratification rather than the legal or financial aspects of this expensive investment. We look at the legal and financial aspects of joint property purchases. The first question that comes to your mind while purchasing a property is under whose name is the property registered? This is probably the first question a couple must ask before they embark on the home buying journey. From a legal perspective, 
the property belongs to the person under whose name it is registered. Since a newly purchased property would fall in the category of self-acquired property, the person would be legally free to dispose of it in any manner. Therefore, decide whether the property would be registered jointly or solely. Just like any home buyer, a couple too would be expected to bring 20% of the property value from their pocket and the bank would finance the remaining 80% depending on their eligibility. Since the credit taking capacity of a couple is higher than a bachelor, spouses have the option to apply for a higher loan amount. However, this is where you must consider if it is really necessary to take a joint loan. In the case of a joint loan, irrespective of your understanding, both parties are legally and financially liable to pay the EMIs and the loan. Both parties are servicing a loan, thus the chances of fresh borrowing for other needs are limited. You are supposed to bring at least 20% of the property price. At home, no real calculations are made about each person's share when arranging this money. This leaves a legal and financial grey area. Irrespective of who paid the down payment, the property would belong to the person under whose name it is registered. Banks don't care who pays the EMI for as long as it is getting paid. Couples may decide that one party would make the EMI payments while the other party would run the household. It may seem easy, however, that is not true from a legal financial view. The person bearing the household expenses may get the short end of the stick in the case of future disagreements. They may not be contributing towards EMI payment on paper, but they are equally responsible for the payment. So this was our piece of advice to married couples about how they are going to buy property. That's it from us for this episode. We shall be back again with a fresh episode of Keeping It Real by Housing.com with information and insights on the real estate industry. Take care and stay safe.